look around and you'll notice everything in the universe follows consistent rules. From apples falling off trees to planets orbiting the sun. These rules are what we call the laws of physics, and they can often be written as concise mathematical equations. For example, the same law of gravity that makes an apple fall also keeps the moon in orbit. These laws don't change from one corner of the cosmos to another, nor from one time to another. They have been the same as far as we know over billions of years. Why these specific laws? Why are they what they are? Let's figure out the answer to that question. That's coming up right now. Why should the universe obey neat mathematical laws at all? There's no obvious reason that reality couldn't have been a chaotic mess of unrelated rules. In a hypothetical reality like a video game world, a character analyzing their universe might find a jumble of arbitrary, quirky rules put in by a programmer. But by contrast, our universe's laws have an almost magical regularity. They display symmetries, patterns that remain unchanged under various transformations. As I showed in a prior video, this is why certain quantities like energy and momentum are always conserved. Could they have been different? Certain symmetries demand certain laws. Emmy Neuter showed that if you want the laws of the universe to remain the same over time, then the law of energy conservation has to be true, meaning that energy cannot be created or destroyed, at least not locally. And if you want the laws to be the same here as on the moon or as on a different galaxy, then the law of momentum conservation has to be true. I have a video on why these laws must be true under those symmetries here if you want to know the details. Closely related to symmetry is the potential for unification in physics. The idea that all the different forces and particles we see might be aspects of one single fundamental principle. Unification has been the holy grail of physics. History has seen some great successes here. Isaac Newton realized that the gravity holding us here on Earth and the gravity guiding planets are one and the same law. In the 19th century, James Clerk Maxwell discovered that electricity, magnetism, and light are all unified in a single theory of electromagnetism. In the 1960s, physicists showed that electromagnetism and the weak nuclear force, which is responsible for certain kinds of radioactive decay, are actually two facets of one electroweak force. These triumphs encourage the idea that the four fundamental forces we know of, that is, electromagnetism, the strong force, the weak force, and gravity, might all merge into one force at high energies, or early moments of the Big Bang. In other words, the many laws we have now could be branches of a single trunk. The laws of the universe could exist as they do because at the deepest level, there's only one law, which may even be an elegant and simple one. This is one of the reasons why so many physicists are working on the elusive theory of everything. Another answer regarding why our laws exist could be found if we look at the universe from an anthropic point of view. The laws seem almost custom made for the existence of complexity and life. Scientists refer to this as fine tuning. There are fundamental constants in physics, fixed numbers like the strength of gravity, the charge of an electron, and the mass of a proton, etc which could, in theory, have been different. Tweaking these values even a little in some cases would result in a universe where life or even chemistry and stars could never arise. There's nothing mathematically wrong with those other hypothetical universes. They just wouldn't be so interesting because there would be no galaxies, no planets, no DNA, maybe not even any atoms at all. For example, a slight increase in the strength of the electromagnetic force might cause atoms to stick together so tightly that chemistry as we know it couldn't happen. A tiny decrease in the strong nuclear force could make atomic nuclei unstable, meaning no complex elements beyond hydrogen. Change the balance of these forces or the masses of particles just a little bit, and the universe might have consisted of nothing but diffuse gas or collapsed into a black hole, or never formed stars to begin with. The bottom line is, out of an unimaginably large space of possible physical laws and constants, the set that yields a complex, life-friendly universe like ours is extremely tiny, like hitting the bullseye of a dartboard exactly in the center. The fact that everything is so precisely set or fine-tuned is puzzling. 
It's as if the universe rolled the dice and somehow landed exactly on the very special values that allow life like ours to exist. Why? If you're fascinated by how simple rules can generate complex outcomes, the same instinct behind physics, then Triple Ten, our sponsor, can help you turn that curiosity into something you're passionate about, and then to make that passion your career. They offer flexible online boot camps built around real project-based learning that can help you land a new job. You learn by doing, building real-world projects with real companies, no prior experience required. It's a hands-on, beginner-friendly tech boot camp that actually works. Triple Ten teaches you how to stay ahead of the curve and use AI at work to remain competitive. And if that still sounds unconvincing, they even offer an AI automation course that shows you how to integrate AI into your current job to make your processes more efficient. The schedule fits around you, and by graduation, you'll have a portfolio that proves you can take a messy question, gather data, build, and get results. The same kind of problem-solving muscles you might exercise while watching this channel. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description box to try a free career consultation with the Triple Ten expert. They'll help you map out the best career path for you. Many thanks to Triple Ten for supporting evidence-driven learning. The anthropic principle could be a possible explanation. In simple terms, it says, the universe's laws have to allow life, at least somewhere. Because otherwise, we wouldn't be here to notice the laws in the first place. In other words, out of all the possible universes with all sorts of laws, it should be no surprise that we find ourselves in one of the rare cases where the laws are compatible with observers existing. Invoking this anthropic principle is not satisfying because it doesn't pinpoint a cause, so much as to say, we got lucky, and only the lucky cases gets observers. So if you buy this idea, then you should marvel at how special our universe's laws are, because the many bad rolls of the dice could just produce no one to marvel at anything. This is where the next idea may make the anthropic principle more powerful. The idea that perhaps there are many, many universes out there, each with different laws. If that's the case, then it's no wonder that one of them turned out to be like ours. So what if our universe, with the specific set of laws, is just one of many? This is the premise of the multiverse hypothesis. The multiverse is a speculative idea that there could be other universes besides our own, possibly an infinite number of them, forming a vast cosmic ensemble. These other universes might have completely different fundamental constants and even entirely different laws of physics. Some might be dead and boring with no structure. Others might have laws so wildly different that we can't even imagine what they'd be like. Keep in mind, however, that life could not be ruled out on all the other universes. They could certainly have a different form of life, just not the kind we're familiar with. We happen to live in one universe that's just right for our kind of life. And that's not a coincidence. It's why we're in this one and not some other one. This approach takes the sting out of fine tuning. If there are countless universes with varying properties, it's not so impossible that one of them hit the jackpot. It's like saying it's incredibly unlikely to win the lottery, but if enough people buy tickets, someone is bound to win. We could be the winning ticket. The anthropic principle would say that conscious observers will only find themselves in those universes that happen to permit conscious beings to exist. You might say, wait a minute, this is just a cop-out way to explain a crazy idea. Prove it. Well, while we can't prove it because there's no direct evidence, there are scientific reasons to take the multiverse idea seriously. There are multiple theories in physics that suggest a multiverse. For example, eternal inflation theory which is an extension of the Big Bang Theory. It predicts that our universe might be just one bubble in an eternally expanding foam of bubble universes. String theory, when combined with inflation, hints at a landscape of possible universes with different properties. I have a video on this up here if you want to know more about this. There's also the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics, which posits that every quantum event branches into parallel realities. A form of multiverse where, essentially, every possible outcome for the universe exists in some branch. This idea is interesting because it provides a mechanism for multiple universes, but it's important to stress that so far, these other universes remain hypothetical. Some scientists criticize multiverse concepts for being untestable and therefore not scientific. After all, how do you confirm the existence of worlds 
you can never observe. That said, the multiverse is a serious idea being discussed in the scientific community precisely because it would naturally answer a lot of the why these laws types of questions. And it's implied in several scientific theories. And if true, it could turn what looks like an astonishing one in a trillion coincidence into something inevitable. It would be humbling, implying that our universe might not be unique or special or designed. Just one lucky bubble in a vast multitude of universes. Now, so far we've been talking as if the laws of physics are at the deepest level of reality. But another line of thought is that maybe the laws are not fundamental at all, but instead emergent, meaning they arise out of something more basic. In everyday physics, we already see emergence, for example, temperature and pressure in a gas. These aren't fundamental properties of molecules, they emerge from the collective behavior of trillions of molecules moving and colliding. The idea here is perhaps on the most microscopic fundamental scale, the universe follows some ultra simple rule and everything we call the laws of physics at higher levels from chemistry to biology to astrophysics are just effective laws that come out of the underlying system when it gets large and complex. This is taken seriously in physics research. For example, some approaches to quantum gravity suggest space-time itself might not be fundamental. It could emerge from something like entangled quantum information. So the concept of gravity might emerge from more basic quantum interactions. There are theories of emerging gravity trying to show this. If true, then asking why do the laws exist as they do might translate to why does the underlying system produce these emergent rules? This may be easy to answer if the base rules are simple. The emergent idea would also add an interesting twist to the idea of a designed universe. If a very simple underlying rule set naturally yields complexity, you don't need someone to fine tune each law. It self organizes. A great example of this is the behavior of a flock of birds. It's based on three simple rules based on the behavior of a bird's neighbor, not a single leader. One, don't get too close to each other. Two, don't get too far away from another bird. And three, fly in a parallel direction. If you watch, it looks almost designed, but it's emergent. Just three simple principles. In fact, the video you're seeing here is a computer simulation based on just these three rules. It looks like an actual flock of birds. Likewise, maybe our universe's laws are the end result of some basic simple principles organizing itself. Another philosophical angle is to consider why is mathematics so accurately able to model the way our universe works? Why should the abstract world of numbers align so well with reality? Physicist Max Tegmark turns this argument on its head. He argues that the universe is mathematics and the physical world is its abstraction. That we simply perceive the mathematical universe as physical because we are inside it. Some philosophers and physicists also talk about the idea of a cosmic designer or creator, not necessarily in a religious way, but as a hypothesis to explain fine tuning. Maybe an intelligent entity chose the laws. This is similar to the simulation hypothesis where a programmer programmed the laws of the universe. But as a scientific explanation, that raises more questions than it answers. Who designed the designer's universe? How did the designer arise? It kicks the can down the road without really answering the question. Frank Wilczek, a Nobel winning physicist, put it this way, the beauty of physical laws is too impressive. It has led people to believe that a tasteful higher being created us. But this hypothesis goes far beyond the evidence. Before adopting it, we should explore more economical alternatives. Perhaps the most astonishing fact is that there are life producing laws that are knowable. How lucky we are that we have the capability and are living in a time when we can explore this, what I think is the ultimate existential question, because it leads to the universe, life, and everything we know. Those of you for whom this video may have created a spark to learn more about certain topics in more detail, I created a special playlist just for you. You'll see it right up here in the corner. And for those of you who want to discuss any topic I covered in this video, or any other video in more detail, consider becoming part of my Patreon community, where I answer any question and discuss any topic of interest to my members. The link to my Patreon is in the description. Thank you for so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next video, my friend.